course, I knew before I started writing Tiggy where part of her story was going to be set, the magnificent highlands of Scotland. I was lucky enough to find the perfect estate to visit, Allerdale near the tiny village of Ardgay. So I moved up there and began to write. And as I did so, it was the strangest feeling as I realised that Tiggy was the sister who was most like me. Out of all my locations, waking up to see the snowy glen laid out in front of me was not only inspirational, but a joy. And I literally lived and breathed Tiggy's story. Ironically, Tiggy is most afraid of the isolation, but then she meets Charlie Kinnaird, the owner and laird of the estate, plus a shadowy character from Maya's story, who, by coincidence, is staying up there over New Year. As she cares for her wildcats, her life becomes far more dramatic than she could ever have imagined. She also meets Chile, an ancient Spanish gypsy, who tells her he'd once been told that he would send her back home to the Seven Caves of Sacramonte. A series of events sends Tiggy fleeing the Canard estate, and with nowhere else to go, and Chile's words ringing in her ears, she boards a flight to Granada. Both myself and Tiggy were awed by Sacramonte, the gypsy caves hewn out of rock to become their homes when they were banished from the main city. What they lacked in home comforts was partly made up for by the sheer beauty of the setting, the verdant olive groves pouring down the hillside and the Alhambra Palace sitting high above them on the opposite side of the valley. And of course, the sound of flamenco music. As Tiggy hears the story of Maria and her daughter Lucia, destined to become the most famous flamenco dancer of her time, she also begins to trust in her own gift handed down from generations before her. Then, from the sweet-smelling orange groves of Andalusia, we travel to the vibrant streets of New York to begin the story of Electra, the sixth sister. <laughs> 